overwhelmed with AI and you don't know which tool to pick, the good old ChatGPT or the brand new Microsoft Copilot. If you're wondering what's the difference between these tools, I got you covered. What's up guys, I'm Dave and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to compare Microsoft Copilot, the new AI tool from Microsoft with ChatGPT. If you're not yet familiar with ChatGPT, I warmly encourage you to peek out of this rock you've been living under. <laughs> In this video, you'll learn the main features of this tool, what differentiates them, and also I'll ask the same question to both of them and compare the answers they give me. Note that we'll compare the free versions only of this tool in this video. Copilot is an AI tool made by Microsoft. It is like a robot brain to help you with your daily tasks. You can ask it any question, just like you're talking to a friend and it will give you an answer. It is absolutely free and powered by Bing, Microsoft's search engine. I personally use Copilot for everything now, but specifically for these topics. I will correct my grammar errors in my email because as you can hear, English is not my main language. I will also ask Copilot to shorten my email so I get straight to the point. It also helps me with the YouTube video scripts and most of the time I use Copilot to generate ideas. At work, when we had a meeting with potential investors, I was just asking Copilot, hey, can you tell me which are the top 10 questions that venture capitalist investors are asking when they do a funding series? To be honest with you, I completely replaced Google with Microsoft Copilot as it makes the search much faster. Copilot will just go through all the articles and summarize them in a quick post. And you can then click on the link so you can go straight up to the article to validate the information. There's also a paid version of Copilot. It's called Microsoft Copilot Pro. It is $20 US per month, but for this video, we'll stick with the free version. Now for ChatGPT. Well, it has been created by OpenAI, an AI research and development company. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Yes, like the movie Transformer. <laughs> we could say that ChatGPT is very similar to Microsoft Copilot. It is a generative AI tool using natural language. If you want to differentiate them though, just think it like that. Copilot is more like a search engine tool building on your Microsoft 365 apps behavior, while ChatGPT is more to have a conversation with a robot. ChatGPT common use cases could be one of the following. Compose essays or emails, create lists, describe art in detail, write some code, summarize content, create poems and songs lyric, or even build your resume. Please note that there is also a paid version of ChatGPT and guess what? The cost is exactly the same as Microsoft Copilot. I'm not sure that was planned. Or was it? <laughs> if you love my incredible acting skills, make sure you boop the like button. Now it's time to compare the features of both tools. First, the biggest difference is the information cutoff. ChatGPT has an information cutoff as of January 2022 right now, and it changes as we go. It was previously in 2021, while Copilot is actually a live search AI. Using its Bing search engine, Microsoft Copilot gives you access to real-time information. Yes, it is live. If you missed last Sunday football game, you can ask Copilot to do you a summary of these games. Another main difference is that the free version of ChatGPT is using the GPT version 3.5, while Microsoft Copilot is using the GPT version 4. Microsoft are not really advertising on this one. The free version, they say it offers the GPT-4, but when it's too busy, it's gonna lower you down on the GPT-3.5 version. And this is why you might want to go with Copilot Pro because it guarantees you priority access to GPT-4. I won't get too technical here, but the main difference between GPT-4 and 3.5 is that GPT-4 can analyze images. It's more precise, it's more powerful. Anyway, you get it. There is a feature in ChatGPT that is really nice and it's called custom instructions. Basically, you can tell ChatGPT who you are, where you live, or whatever you do for a living, who's your audience, which question you're going to ask him about, and it avoids that you always type the same thing. Hi, I'm an accountant before your question. 
Microsoft Copilot unfortunately doesn't offer this setting yet, but I'm sure it's gonna come very soon. Both tools lets you keep a chat history, so after a long weekend, if you wanna jump back in straight in your conversation with your favorite robot tool, then you can with just a click. Please note that both of these tools are also available on mobile, so they follow you everywhere and you can ask any question while you're drinking at the bar with friends, you can ask any question to this robot. <laughs> Another difference between the two tools is that with Microsoft Copilot, you can actually choose a conversation style. You can be more creative to start an original and imaginative chat. You can be more balanced. It's recommended for everyday and really informed chats. Or you can be more precise, start a concise chat, useful for fact finding. Unfortunately, ChatGPT doesn't offer this kind of conversation style. Now I wanted to compare the behavior of Copilot on the right and ChatGPT on the left. For ChatGPT, I made sure that my custom instructions were blank. My question is, what are some effective strategies for career advancement in the tech industry? Let's see what ChatGPT gives me and let's see what Microsoft Copilot gives me. So actually ChatGPT 3.5, as you can see at the top, it gives me the GPT version. It's going crazy with 16 recommendations. It starts with the continuous learning while Microsoft Copilot gives me continuous learning as well. It's in bullet form in ChatGPT, while in Copilot, it's more like a plain text. As we can see really quick, the length of the answer is much longer into Microsoft Copilot. It gives me six points, while ChatGPT on the left gives me 16 points. I would say that the answer of ChatGPT 3.5 is a little bit more complete, while Copilot is more summarized. I had a look really quick, and basically the answers are really similar. We have continuous learning, we have soft skill development on both sides, we have set clear goals. Basically, the answer is really similar between the two, but ChatGPT is a little bit more complete on this one. I started a new topic and I want to ask this time, how can professionals maintain a healthy work-life balance while working remotely? And let's see what ChatGPT gives me and let's see what Copilot gives me. So ChatGPT is going crazy once again with more than 10 points while Copilot is really giving me some resources. As you can see, we have a quote from Resources All Labs and also from teambuilding.com. That means Copilot is going through the internet through his Microsoft Bing search engine. It gives me six points once again, while GPT gives me 12 points. They give me similar answer. As you can see, point number five for ChatGPT is take regular breaks, while point five for Copilot is also take regular breaks. It tells me to limit overtime, and on the right, it gives me to keep consistent hours. They tell me on the left as well, stick to a routine. So basically, I will say that the answers are kind of similar, but I have more information on Copilot as I can click on the links here down below and it brings me to articles from the internet. For this one, I will give it a big win to Copilot because it gives me articles that I can just go to and read more on the topic. The last question I want to ask is what are the top online resources for continuous learning and professional development in the field of data science? I will send a message to ChatGPT and send a message to Copilot. And on this one, I already have to give the win to Copilot because it is actualized with actual information. As I said earlier, ChatGPT is stuck January 2022, so you won't have the most updated information. As you can see on the right, Copilot gives me links to different universities such as the MIT, McGill, or even Coursera, while on the left, we really have different answers. We don't have any university compared to Copilot, we have Coursera as well, we have LinkedIn Learning on the left, we have GitHub, while on the right we have GitHub, we have EDX as well, which is on the both side, we have Kago on both sides as well, but Copilot gives me links to these course. What I like from Copilot here is that it will be really updated with actual data, while ChatGPT will give me outdated data. I have to give it to Copilot for this one. I finally asked both tools to create an image of an orc in the world of Warcraft, and as I told you, ChatGPT free version doesn't create images. I logged on my pro account for Copilot, but it is the same 
as the free version for this one because you need to be signed in. It's generating the image of my org and here it is using Dali 3 and Designer. It made a beautiful image of orcs in World of Warcraft and then I can get my next tattoo. <laughs> Why does Taylor Swift never answer my emails? ChatGPT tells me I don't have access to personal information about individual including Taylor Swift email interaction. I personally made the switch to Microsoft Copilot from ChatGPT. As a professional accountant, I feel that it suits my needs better. Please know that I'm not coding, I don't code anything, and thanks God because I hate it. <laughs> Tell me in the comments which tool are you using and why. Also, if you're wondering if you should go all in and pay for the Microsoft Copilot Pro version, I made a video right here comparing everything that you need to know and make sure that you choose the right tool for you. See you soon, my name is Dave and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Cheers!